What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and today we're going to explore the runtime API in HAProxy. And if you don't know, HAProxy is a beautiful proxy, also reverse proxy, also load balancer designed for performance. And I love using it because it has exactly what I need and it is absolutely simple. It's not bloated with features that I, I, I have no idea what, that, what they do or I don't really care about it's just simple straightforward and they are very specific when it comes to that stuff so I love HA proxy so guys if you don't know me I experiment with a lot of technologies a lot of proxies a lot of databases but from time to time I, I kind of try to lean in to one and make it my primary like Postgres is now my primary database yet I made video about more, a lot of databases HA proxy is my primary proxy but I made a video about Nginx, I made a video about traffic, I made a video about Envoy, and I compared it to HAProxy, still HAProxy is a winner for me, right? Doesn't mean that that is also true for you, but this is just a personal preference at the end of the day. Today we're going to explore the runtime API of HAProxy that allows us to, you know, shut down a server for maintenance remotely or start a server back up remotely for a temporary while the HAProxy is running. And, it's just, and there's a list of commands that you stuff you can do, which is amazing. Right, how about we jump into it? So there will be two chapters to jump into the interesting part of the video because I like to start from scratch in every single video. This is just some, something I like. I, I enjoy. This is th therapeutic for me. So let's go ahead and uh, create a folder here called haproxy-runtime, right? And then we're gonna go into that stuff. So what we're gonna do here is we will spin up two web servers hosting an HTML file one is viewing a red page and one is viewing a green page and we're going to spin up an HA proxy instance again we load balance between them through a single endpoint uh, we've done a lot of these examples so let's let's do that let's create a make directory site one make directly site two and uh, i don't know let's create a, an html file you know what let's just go into site one and create a index.html index.html and uh, no, no, no. HTML, let's do a body, BG color, equal red, and then uh, site one. This is site one, right? And then we're gonna listen, we're gonna probably listen to a specific port, right? Let's just go ahead and save that. Let's copy the index.html to that, that site two. Is that how you do it? Index.html? Yep. Just go copying it there. And then we're gonna go to site two, and then we're gonna change the site two, obviously, to green, verd, and then south, as in Persian, call it. Then boo! Ah! Vem! Do it! And just like that, we have now two HTML files. What we're gonna do here is, um, let's go to, boom, site one, and do http dash server dot and let's specify the port 8080 boom so that will be hosted on you know let's, let's cancel this let's run it with this command that means it's, it's gonna run in the background awesome and we're gonna so we're listening on port 8080 for site one remember that guys now let's go boom site two and then we're gonna do HTTP server 8081. So 8080 is the site one, 8081 is site two. Boom, just like that, we have beautiful two servers, right? So now, obviously if you go to the browser now, let's open a browser. So obviously 8081, 8080 is site one, and 8081 is site two. There was a little bit of cache there. Boop, boop. Boring stuff, right? So what we need to do is let's open a brand new terminal so we don't get bombarded with, with a lot of stuff here. Now, now we're gonna do the configuration for HA proxy. I have HA proxy installed here. By the way, I use HTTP dash server. That's just a basic server. You can use any web server for this, right? Now, let's do a vim HA proxy .cfg, and let's do define a front end. The beautiful front end is gonna call it F. That's why I like HAProxy. It's just very consistent, very minimalistic, and it, it's to the point, right? I'm gonna bind everything that I have here that is safe, probably is not safe, 
for production. So you, you need to bind to the specific interface that you want, right? I'm binding on everything here because I'm testing, right? And let's point it to port 9000. And let's do the mode at HTTP and let's define a client uh, timeout. If the client didn't, didn't do anything in 10 seconds, kill it, right? And uh, what else? I'm gonna use, immediately use the backend all, right? And let's define the backend all here. Server, first of all, let's define the timeouts. Timeout, timeout, we have timeout connect. Uh, give up if you can't connect to the backend in 10 seconds. Timeout server. Give up if the server is taking more than 60 seconds. Obviously, we can we can play with these timeouts. I love I love playing with these timeouts all the time, right? Just, so you so basically you have to put exactly what you need, right? Only pay for what you need, as uh, as Geico says, right? Server S1 was it Geico or another one? The Liberty Insurance. My God, I feel like I'm sponsoring those guys. All right, server S1, <laughs> what are we going to call it? The S1 is 127.0.0.1 on port 8080. And server S2, 127.0.0.1, IT81. So these are going to be load balanced. Obviously, you, we need, what, what did we forget? We forgot the mode HTTP. And guys, I, I, I can do this in a global, but I like to retype stuff twice because, yeah. <laughs> all right let's do that stuff ha proxy ha proxy conf Ooh, we nailed it from the first time babe I'll go back to the browser 9000 right and then refresh boof david getter here look at that beautiful all right this is boring stuff we have done this million times okay kill it and let's do the runtime now. The runtime API, to enable the runtime API, my friends, enabling the runtime API is absolutely easy, right? I'm gonna do, obviously, since it's an API, you need an endpoint to connect to, and you can't really use that endpoint, right? So to define this, we need the global section. That's the first time ever in all my videos that I use the global, for, the global section for something, right? I don't use, uh, keywords only if I absolutely need them. Now, technically I can move this up and I can move this up and I can move these guys up as well, right? But I'm not gonna do that because uh, I'm not that proficient in Vim. <laughs> That's the... <laughs> I force myself to write in Vim to become better, but I'm not that good to copy and paste. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll get better as I write more, more Vim. Vim Vim. All right, so now uh, what, what, is, uh, this, what is that command? So there is a stats. Keyword, you want a socket on IPv4, right? Because you can have an IPv6, and this is very critical. Dot zero, dot zero, dot one, and then this is where are you listening? Be very careful not to do an asterisk here. Very, very careful on production. This, you might get away with it. This, you're exposing an API to your load balancer to the whole world very dangerous that's why you have to do zero zero unless you you want to expose it to all interfaces right be very careful while doing this never copy and paste guys again dun, 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 dun. and then the, i'm gonna use 9999 as the api and then we're gonna define a level and we're gonna go with admin and that's it there is other stuff that we absolutely don't need this is for ha proxy the paid version right? so level admin that's it now we have, HA Proxy will be listening on port 9999 and we'll start listening for our beautiful commands. Now do boom, HA Proxy dash if, HA uh, uh, Proxy, all right, and then HA Proxy, open a new beautiful new terminal. And now, how do we communicate with this API? It's a beautiful, it's not an, so a lot of people will get mad here because, and that's, a, uh, that's, this is something I absolutely agree with the founders of HA Proxy. They keep things simple. They built a TCP runtime API for simplicity reason. They they could have done it in HTTP. You cannot go and have a beautiful interface. They said, you know, we're not gonna worry about beautiful interface. Someone else can build that for us. All right, but you can just connect with Telnet, right? 
they don't mention that in the uh, in the in the doc but there there is another command called uh, socat yeah, you can do but i kind of prefer this it's just easier that's like 9999 then once you connect tell them to establish a tcp connection since an ack ack and then you can type uh, anything just a uh, help and then boom that will send a command that's the string help into the socket to the api and then we'll return the the help for us Woohoo! That is beautiful. Look at all this stuff that you can do. I'm gonna do, you can disable health, disable agent, or you would do it, disable health. It's just, have we not learned from 2020? We want to disable health? No, please don't disable health. We're gonna disable server, I'm gonna enable it. Let's, let's do this fun. Let's do this fun stuff. But before that, let's show you how the other way of doing this. So using Silcat. That is, you can do an echo help and then pipe that thing to socat is tdio tcp4 dash connect right and then 127 uh, 0.0.1 so what that does is like it does establish a connection but it does pipe this so you can do it with a, it's exactly the same thing right all right so now let's let's have some fun do a telnet and now i'm going to disable a server and when i do that I'm gonna disable server. Remember what are our servers? It's on the back end all and it's named S1. So I'm gonna disable server one. Boom, just like that. If it didn't say anything, that means it worked. Go back and if I refresh, no matter how many time I refresh, server server one is dead to us. Well, it's not dead, it's, it's disabled for maintenance. So HA proxy will no longer forward request to site one anymore. It's only that. So now, you can just turn it back on. Enable server S1. All S1. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, go back and then it's it's we're back to David Gatter dancing. Look at that beautiful thing. Now, for fun, you can do so much stuff. I'm gonna give you the whole list of the commands and the help and all that. Have fun doing that stuff, right? It's a lot of fun no. So let's go ahead and disable. Disable server, uh, disable server all S2. Boom. Then if I disable server S2, now we're only getting a site one. But take a look at this. If you restart server, uh, look at that. It's actually, it's getting, HA proxy is actually telling you the states of what is happening in the, in the console here. If I kill it and restart it again, and then go back, look at that. It is, what happened? I thought I disabled that. That is because disabling anything or doing any command, any configuration changing through the runtime API does not persist through restart. It is just a temporary thing, so be careful of that. If you want to persist, if you want to persist, there is something called, let's get it, let's get it done. So if you want, to preserve the change in the runtime API, you can use this directive that's called server state file. And basically you write, you, you specify a file path and anything you do in the runtime API will persist. But be absolutely very careful because someone just got bit by this exactly. And I made a video about it. Check out the video right here. They changed something through the runtime and then they went to the configuration and tried to change it, but the runtime, the server state file changed by the runtime trumps whatever you have in the configuration. So they were oblivious, like what the heck is going on? We changed the port, but it's not persistent. So check out the video, it was fun to read. So that was very, very interesting. All right, guys, uh, I think that's it. Very quick video to learn about this. I'm gonna push that stuff for you guys um, to, uh, to play with that. I'm gonna push this code, uh, the scripts, all that stuff for you to play with. I'm gonna see you on the next one. No, you guys stay awesome.